Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. This is the Modern Playbook, and we're going to bring you another episode of Dealer Flip Side. So let's go around and introduce all the players. All right. Uh, this is Ben. I'm Mr. Longshort. Uh, happy to play tonight. Good to see everyone. Phil, Vintage Comics and Toys. Samson, Comic Book Journey. Joe, Red Hood Comic. <laughs> I like that. That was, was that the Windows ninety five or Windows two thousand? I can't remember. <laughs> Steve from My Bargain Comics, happy to be here and uh, just sitting on the couch, relaxing tonight. Nice. And Tony from Blue Green Artifacts, and I'm gonna win the game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no and I'm Aaron. Yeah, and I'm Aaron. Uh, you can catch me on Comic Book Food Chain, and these books are brought to you today by Nico. And then we also have a, a book from Heineken underscore Jones on Instagram. So I'll, I'll shout out again once we hit that book. For, but for our first of the books, we have Darth Vader number three, the first print, cover A, that ended at a CGC 9.8, and Edge of the Spider-Verse number two, second print, hmm. CGC 9.8. So I'll, I'll start on this one. This is a good one. Ooh, this is a good one. Uh, Nico, this was Nico, huh? Um, yep. All right. I um, feel like he was screaming at me on this one. Um, Dr. Afra, going to be a really big character, no question about it. Spider Gwen, because I'm a Marvel guy, Marvel comic guy, um, is, uh, is huge, right? You know, just right on Miles' heels. What I will say about this second print here is that. It is um, the rarest of the late printings. Now, you really it doesn't look that different, frankly, from, from the first print. It just has that blue bar at the bottom. Um, but if I recall, there were uh, just over 5,000 copies ordered of this one, making it the rarest. Um, outside of the second print of number zero, which is technically the seventh print, I guess, of this line. Um, but I do like this um, this second print a lot. I, I've got one. So for me, um, I'm going to go with Edge of Spider-Verse 2 second print, fully acknowledging that Dr. Aphra is, is likely to be a very, very big character in the Star Wars universe here at some point. Yeah, so I was living in Los Angeles um, when these two books came out. And uh, Edge of Spider-Verse 2 was like, the can't miss book and everyone was going nuts. Um, and star Wars, Darth Vader three followed after that. Um, both books with like later printings, they sat on shelf, like later prints were not a thing yet. The buzz was bigger on the spider Gwen, but the Darth Vader three also languished for a really, really long time in the market. Like you could, you could have picked up copies for like, 15 to 25 bucks before all the star wars hype versus the edge of spider verse 2 um i'm not sure where the second print was at but the first print was always like like a 150 dollar book you know but based off spec and whew, how the market is going i think the darth vader 3 and 9 8 and first print i think it's going to hit a thousand dollars relatively soon so, um, based off no spec and just readership, people buying um, the latest back issues, um, well, actually, the latest books coming out on New Comic Book Day, people getting excited um, with the new stories coming up, um, well, and not really yeah. needing spec, I'd go with the first Dr. Afro and Darth Vader 3 in 9-8. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> um, you know, I, I totally agree with Phil on this one. Um, although I remember seeing both these um, books at this, around the same price when they're around like 30 to $50. I'm still kicking myself not buying any of them. Um, I really don't know. I, didn't, I never really, I don't know much about Darth, um, about Dr. Afra. I'm barely, I just barely started reading about her right now. But what I do know is that these Star Wars fans are, are crazy when it goes over these books <laughs> i mean the collectors they just buy up everything and they save them and they store them in their closet or whatnot um as far as um spider gwen uh, the second print that blue label just commands a high premium for some reason 
when it comes to most of the uh, most of the books. Um, but I'm gonna lean towards um, Doctor Afra. I think um, I think I think um, Phil's right. I think that she's gonna hit it. I think this book is uh, on its way to hit 1K. She doesn't need any spec. She has so much material to work with, and um, there's a lot of fans behind her. Same with Spider Gwen. Um, but you know, that I think it's more connected towards uh, Miles Morales. Um, if she branches off more into her own little her own series, you know, on screen, I think the I think it'll spike. But I think um, a solid pick would be Dar um, Darth Vader three nine point eight. I think it just I think it has a lot of more room to grow. Okay, I'll go. Um, so. I think this is an issue of who do you trust to do the most, make, make the most bang for the buck? Is it is it Disney or is it Sony? And I'm very underwhelmed, uh, especially during uh, probably during the pandemic and before it. Sony's almost been silent. I mean, we did see the Venom trailer the other week. And that was like the first peep we've heard of them uh, for seemingly forever. Uh, and it's just disappointing. It, that silence. And uh, I, I feel like Disney, even though they haven't done anything with Afro yet, aside from the comics, they're not going to waste the opportunity in the same way i think you know disney just is being purposeful and they've got enough uh eggs in the basket or uh you know they've they've got enough plates spinning right now but if they didn't i think afro would be at the top of it whereas you know sony's sitting on a potential gold mine you could even argue with 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 Miles and some other characters. And yeah, they did Spider-Verse, but that seems like a decade ago, you know, even though it wasn't. So, um, so I, I trust Disney to make the most hay with Afra, and I'm hesitant to see what Sony does further with, with Spider-Gwen and, and, and in what time frame. So I'd go with Afra. Final answer. Yeah, let's. You know, I'd have to go Afra because I don't want to. I don't want to slab ship from Canada. That's it. <laughs> Not gonna happen. No, I. Uh, this is a good one. I, I. It feels like there's a buying opportunity with Spider Gwen right now. Uh, as many as many explosive growth books that, that we've seen over the last six months. I. Not to say that Edge of Spider Verse hasn't gone up, but not nearly as much as as some of those other, even the just the other Spider Verse characters. Uh, so I I do think it's a good time to buy Spider Gwen books. Uh, it, like Steve was saying, I don't know when they'll figure out that character. Obviously, she's going to be in Edge of Spider Verse too. Um, the the real game changer would be when when we see her on screen. Who knows? I mean, there is a there is a Gwen in the in from uh, from one of the Spider Verse movies that we're going to see characters from in the in the next Tom Holland Spider Man movie. It might be a total flyer, but if Emma Stone shows up, there's an opportunity there, I guess, in to show a Spider Verse version. I don't know. Um, I like Spider Gwen. I, I'm I'm with. Uh, Mr. Long short on that. However, I do, I, I got to lean to my seller instincts. There's just something about Dr. Afra. It's like lightning in a bottle. It's the, the idea of the star Wars universe, the idea of a, an Indiana Jones type character, murder droids. Uh, I, I, I don't know what it is. Like even people who've never read it, if you describe the character, they can already envision like it, it, it's going to be, it's an instant fan favorite. You, you can screw up anything, granted. But um, 
with the right casting, with the right director, with the right, the right writing, uh, it's I, I do think that could be enormously huge, which a lot of people agree. Um, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Darth Vader just because as soon as there's any whiff of her on screen, that book and all the rainbow color of of uh, late printings after it are gonna really explode. So that's my answer. Uh, Darth Vader three final answer. It's, <laughs> it's a no brainer. Yeah. Good one, Nico. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, it's, uh, Spider Verse Two. It, it's, I mean, it's a low print run, but man, I mean, I can see, I can see Darth Vader Three being a thousand dollar book very quick. I mean, that's just my take. Yeah, I, Nico did a very good job of comparing these books together. I think all it'll take for Darth Vader Three to go ballistic is Disney confirming something. Right, just like you know, a, a TV show, just anything t to confirm to the fans that, like, hey, this is going to happen, um, or it's just even a, an appearance, a brief cameo appearance in something, I think will, will you know make this book go ballistic. But that Edge of Spider Verse two, the second print, like I really do like that blue at the bottom, and with the lower print count than all the other books, I'm gonna have to go with Edge of Spider Verse two. Even though I had the opportunity last year to buy it at like half the price, like right before all that miles like craze, and I'm kind of kicking myself now for not pulling the trigger on that one. Let me ask you guys: Do you think the race between Spider Gwen and Miles Morales is first? You think it's done? Like, do you think it's that race over with? You guys think? What do you mean as far as the race? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Ultimate Fallout Four first print versus Edge of Spider-Verse 2 first print. Do you think, Do you think we'll ever see overcome the difference? Hmm. I think at anyone can answer, but I think hmm. at some point in time it will. Um I don't think it's anytime soon. Uh I think like once more people realize like oh, there's a lot less Edge of Spider-Verse 2 and I'm more excited about this character. I think people will will gravitate more towards spider Gwen. Yeah, I think if you, someday if you had a solo feature film with a great, you know, an excellent casted actor or actress, uh, I think spider Gwen would, I mean, it, it's already one of the most cosplayed characters out there. Yeah. Are, are we gonna see a Silk film too? Um, I mean, she plays in that yeah. universe, right, too, as well. No. Uh, yeah, isn't that through Sony and Amazon? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be the contrary, and I'll, I'll say I don't, I don't think Gwen will ever catch Miles. I, I think Ma Miles is a uh, cross-cultural uh, icon. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's funny that you brought Silk into it. You know, there, there is no... I, I know Silk and Gwen, you know, can be complementary in, in lots of different ways, but you know, that does kind of, you know, divvy up the, the um, audience, you know, hey, am I going to, you know, if I'm a, a female, you know, am I going to dress up as Gwen or am I going to dress up as Silk? Whereas, you know, Miles doesn't really have a, a peer. You know, I mean, you could say, okay, am I going to dress up as Peter Parker or am I going to dress up as Miles? But, uh, it, you know, but it's real, that that's generational. Um, uh, whereas, you know, Gwen and, and Cindy Moon are, are kind of appealing to the same age demographic. So, I mean, I, I, I hear that, but I think as goes Miles, so goes Gwen. They're so connected. And I think they're going to take advantage of that connection if they're going to do anything with the characters on the screen. So I, I have a hard time seeing them displacing Gwen for Silk. And I, it's it's a fair argument, right? Um, that it, they're arguably competing for the same demographic potentially. Um, I, I just feel that Gwen and Miles are are sort of a a package deal almost, if you will. And um, yeah. 
And if Miles goes, Gwen, he's she's, he's going to take Gwen along with her, um, potentially. Maybe they go a different direction. Who knows? But if it's anything like the comics, um, you know, it'll it'll be good to it'll be good to see. It. Um, but I mean, Gwen is without really anything on the screen, right? Just a hugely popular character. No, I, yeah, she, she enter, uh, Edge of Spider Verse. She was in there. I mean, uh, Enter the Into the Spider Verse. She was really cool in that. Maybe one of the best characters. But she was wildly popular before that hit, right? I mean, there's something about this character that people gravitate towards. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see. It's all up to whoever gets control of the character and can they do it right, right? So we will see. I want to right. say too. Uh, well, we got Afra on the screen. Sorry, I just want to give a shout out to to uh, the the sister show that the Dark Side crew and Marco were actually invited me on. We talked about Afra about a week and a half ago. Um, I, I'm firmly in the camp that that Maya Erskine casting for the Obi Wan show. Maybe not. I don't know, but I, I, that's my hope. I'm one of the people that hope that she's going to be Dr. Afra. It doesn't line up perfectly with the very strict uh, canon of, of ages in, in, in Star Wars, but uh, it's definitely in that realm of possibility, and she was my fan cast last fall for the, for the role. So, Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's interesting. My, my last point on this whole thing is just numbers, actually. I just wanted to get that out. Like, Afra could be the much, much bigger character, but in an 85,000 print run book, which the first print had versus 5,000 for the Gwen book, Gwen can be a distant second, but supply demand can still push that second print way up. Um, but we'll see. All right. And for our next set of books, we have X Men 244 at a 9.8 direct edition versus a Batman 251. At a seven five. Joe, why don't you take it away down and we'll go backwards this time. <laughs> okay. Um, um I'll go with the X-Men. I mean, there's so much upside right now. First appearance of a character. That's what people are buying. If you you think about from a resale standpoint, it's a lot easier to sell that one, in in just my opinion. I mean, X-Men is is scalding hot right now, so X-Men final answer. Nice. Yeah. No, I grew up X-Men was my first love in comics. I you know, I am not a, a huge DC collector, but that is one DC book I'd really like to have in my collection. I, I love that cover. It's just classic. Uh I don't care that it's a seven five. I, I would love to own that book, but I, I'm I'm playing this game as a seller and Jubilee. There's a lot of mutants out there, man. There's a, there's so many first appearances for mutants. Uh, but I think because Jubilee is so heavily connected to that nineties boom and that animated, the beloved animated series that uh, that's a character we're going to hear about and, and be talking about for a while. So I think the Jubilee book is going to, is going to go places past that. So, I'll go X-Men. Well, definitely, um, I, I love both these books. I mean, I'm a big fan of Neil Adams and this cover. But if I if I were to make some money, I would definitely go with that X-Men. Jubilee is, um, is I, I think, um, is going to appeal to a, a very much younger audience, which I, hopefully she'll appear. I wouldn't doubt it. And... Um, Every time I look at this book, it just keeps on climbing up the charts. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, with this week, it's at 710. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if next week it's at 750 or 800. Um, these X-Men books, they move very, very fast. And um, they're just so liquid that I don't mind buying them. Um, as far as um, Batman, um I don't know. It's a hit for me. It's a hit or miss. I wouldn't want to. I would. I would buy it just to have it for my PC. But um, as far as ROI, I would definitely go with the nine point eight Jubilee. Man, uh, I mean, what can, what can you say in a in a key character like Jubilee? That there's you know only going to be one first appearance. Although I love, I know people love to argue about you know first appearances and first cameo, first full, but. 
I, I think I've made it clear, you know, like that's not really something I like to spend a, a lot of time on. Whereas there are a number of classic Joker covers. Of course, this is a standout, you know, probably a, a top five. But, um, yeah, from an investment standpoint, from a liquidity uh, standpoint, uh, you got to go with, with the X-Men. Final answer. That Batman 251, oh, my God. I, I was – I man, uh, if only DC, like, speculation was more on the – more hotter with everyone else, I mean, I would – I mean, for me, that book is worth fifteen hundred bucks in a seven five, even you know. Yeah. But the, we got to play it in the market. X Men one twenty nine first Kitty Pride first Emma Frost. I mean, what is that like six thousand seven thousand to nine eight? You got X Men one thirty first Dazzler. That's over two thousand dollars. Miss Marvel eighteen first Mystique. That's probably over two thousand dollars in nine eight. This book is trailing those books, even though it's Copper Age. I think, um, and even trailing the first uh, uh, Gambit X Men two sixty six. So the newsstand has popped big time, but even so, with the direct edition, it's super hard to get in nine eight. I've I've tried slabbing this book, and I've I've never hit a nine eight, only nine sixes. Um. Jubilee is really, really popular character, like everyone else is saying. So I'd uh, buy the X Men 244 98 direct, hold it, and uh, hopefully it hits 1200 at some point this year. Final answer. So I'm not going to belabor the point here in this book. Um, I think I'm pretty much in agreement with everybody else. I will say that it feels like. Uh, when Marvel comes out with the X Men, they're going to lean heavily on that '90s version, and, and Jubilee featured very, very heavily in that. She seems just like uh, a character that they can build a lot around. So I would expect her to be central to um, whatever version of the X Men they come out with. Uh, that's just a guess. Um, but you know, nobody's done more bubblegum covers than Jubilee, and I think that's the one hook that uh, that everybody's missing. So I expect this book to hit thirty thousand. Um, you know, sometime within the next two weeks. Um, so, uh, X Men two forty four final answer. Forty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go with the Batman two fifty one, and this is the the reason why. Like, um, Batman two fifty one has always, I felt like, gone steadily up over the years, and I feel like he'll continue to do that. So to me, it's more of a long-term play versus like the X-Men 244. It seems like, you know, over, I guess, like the last two years, like that book has really started to pick up steam and in, in, in price. I mean, I remember finding these are like, what, easily $20 or less, like in back issue bins, you know, in all kinds of conditions. Um, I didn't realize it was so hard to hit nine eights on it. So... Yeah, I mean, it's hard to pass up on that, but I, I can't see myself paying that much money f for for Jubilee. Even though I know it'll eventually like increase in price. But to me, I think it's a safer bet for the Batman 251 because it'll always be an iconic cover. Let's see what Nico has for us next. Oh, this is actually from Heineken underscore Jones. Thank you so much for submitting this on Instagram. Um, they suggested a Fantastic Four number 52 at a 7.5 versus a Ultimate Fallout 4 CGC 9.8, which we both know, which we all know that uh, Ultimate Fallout 4 has hit over 3K. Uh, I'm guessing it's just at a, at a bit of a dip right now. So, why? Right. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll jump in on this one. This is, well, this this is a good one. Uh, Heineken, uh, uh, great suggestion. Thanks for playing. Um, whew. So, uh, I love Miles Morales, one of my favorite characters uh, to hit comics in a long, long time. Um, I've written about about Miles for a long time, 
and I think this book has a long way to go. Um, I think I'm I'm being drawn to Fantastic Four Fifty Two just because um, a I don't have that book. Um, I think it's super super culturally important from um, um, a social and a comic perspective, from a very big picture level. Um, a, a book that probably hasn't been fully appreciated um, for what it is and what it brought to the genre um, with the Chala. Um, and, um, so I'm pretty comfortable in this case, picking that fantastic Four, uh, 52. Um, I would be going with, with that book, um, at this price point. Cool. Um, I think these both books, it's a race to $5,000. Um, the ultimate fallout Four CGC nine, eight. I mean, no kidding. This is going to hit five G's when, I don't know, but it's not, we're not going to wait too long for it. Fantastic Four 52, CGC 7.5. Um, it's a Silver Age book. Uh, a comparable Bronze Age book in 7.5 would be the uh, Marvel Spotlight 5 in 7.5. And I think that one's getting close to, like, 5 Gs. Um, I think the 52 is definitely under value. So whoever won this auction was quite lucky because I've seen 6 O's being posted for 3,000 OBO. Historical context, uh, T'Challa was the first black superhero for kids growing up around this time in, in the 60s. And I've talked to these fans at shows, um, and their eyes light up whenever they pick up a 52 or a 53. I think the correction for the 52 is going to happen faster in the race. First, the ultimate Fallout 4, getting to 5,000. So my answer is... FF fifty two CGC seven five. Well, let's see. For me, I would definitely go for Ultimate for, uh, Fallout four, in my opinion. But you know, I love older books. Um, it all depends on um, the next film of Black Panther. I think this book is going to spike up pretty high, probably past um, five thousand easily. But you know, when I think long term and I, I think about selling a book fast, I'm going to go with Ultimate Fallout. I that this book will never go out of style. I mean, Miles Morales is is, is here to stay. He's going to he's going to be here for the next decade or two. Um, there's so much more to work with, although Black Panther is a great, great book, a great character and a great Disney property. Um, I just feel that, you know, the sky's the limit with, um, with Miles Morales. It's just a, a win-win situation when you have that book. So I would go with Ultimate Fallout 4, 9.8. Nice. All right. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I'm kind of in the same camp with everybody else. I mean, you got to give Miles respect. You got to understand the popularity of that character and what it's done to the hobby in the last few years. Um, I think that at that price, obviously I think they're selling for 32, 3,300 now. Uh, but even there, it's a good investment. I don't think that's going down. Knock on wood. <laughs> However, I'm going to go with the fantastic four. I mean, he, it's one of the statues in the, you know, in the pantheon of Marvel. It's, it's, it's one of the most important characters in, in the whole, you know, in the whole universe. So, um, yeah. And to me at, at a seven, five for 3,300, it just, it just looks cheap. That looks inexpensive to me. Uh, and that's not going anywhere. So I'm going to go with fantastic four black Panther. Long live the king. Now, you know, I, I think uh, with the death of Chadwick Boseman, I think that really hurt the book. I mean, I think the book moved with, with uh, his appearances and what he was able to do with that character. Was it always going to be an expensive book? Yeah. But I think that he was so dynamic it it drove it it drove its value does that make sense 
And the fact that they're not going to recast Black Panther and and it could possibly be Shuri or maybe they, they bring back Killmonger. Uh, un- unless Killmonger becomes the next Black Panther, that's the only way uh, I see that book growing. I mean, I think it's it's I mean, I think at that price it. I mean, the most I would see it go up maybe four grand in the next year. But that Miles book, that Miles book just keeps on going up and up and up and up. I And there is no ceiling for that book. I mean, it's too many people want that book right now. And I guarantee there's more people that want that book than a Black Panther. You know, you've got you know, veteran collectors, you know, that, you know, we wouldn't mind having that, that fantastic 452. But if you're looking at this globally, like how many people want uh, ultimate fallout Four? I think everybody wants ultimate fallout Four right now. Um, Miles is so marketable and they haven't even cast live action yet. And as soon as they cast live action and it's a likable character and, uh, he uh, resonates with with the young people. I mean, it. it I, I. I. can't imagine what we're going to be talking about a year, two years from now. It's going. It, it's going to be scary. So, that that's my take. Ultimate Fallout Four final answer. Joe, I think you made some really good points. Um, so. I'll put on my collector's hat for a second. And just as a collector, uh, I've had a lot of Ultimate Fallout 4s, mainly the second prints and the variants. I actually haven't had that many first prints. Um, and But I've never had a FF52. Uh, 50, um, 50 and uh, I have actually take a look at it before and I wouldn't mind having one in my uh, personal collection. I love collection. So as a collector, I picked the FF, but um, with my investment hat and uh, yeah, and I've said it before, I think ultimate fallout four is a freight train and uh, there's still a lot of catalysts on the horizon for miles uh, whereas, like Joe was saying, uh, the future looks cloudy or hazy for Black Panther as a movie character. I think there will always, you know, in, in comics, you know, characters can, can live forever. Um, but with the media um, uh, uh, the fuzziness or haziness, uh, it... it at least in the short to medium term until we see what, what kind of forever looks like. Uh, it, it's, it's unclear what that will do to FF 52. So I'm going to go with um, ultimate fallout Four as an investment. And my final answer, you know, real quick, when I, when I look at these books, I, I look at, I look at the bidding, you know, and, and that should be, the most telling point of this whole thing, you know, look at the, the amount of bids for ultimate fallout four versus, uh, uh, fantastic four 52. I mean, I mean, that's a good price for a seven five. And a couple of years ago, you, pro- I, I, I mean, I'd like to think that it was close to that price at a seven five, a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, just the amount of bidding activity kind of lets you know which one is is the hotter book. Of course, you don't know how long the – was it seven days or five days? But that's always kind of been like a clue as far as which one is, is the, the hotter book at, at that time. Does that make sense? Yeah, but there could be also a couple other variables like where it's like a new seller versus – someone that has a huge following too, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that plays an effect a little bit. Um, the day that it ends on, like, I know people say it doesn't matter, but I feel like it, you know, it has a, 
a slight importance of when your options end. Uh, so I mean, there's there's all kinds of factors. Also, what I was going to say is, um, like, as a collector, do you feel like that people collect in books like like in threes, like you know, like everyone calls them like trinities, like where you have like uh, Fantastic Four, 48, 49, 50, um, Hulk 180, the 182, like that people pick pick up books in those kind of collections. So, you know, if you're so close to these other key moments, like in the Fantastic Four run, why not pick up, you know, Fantastic Four 46, Fantastic Four 52, and, you know, so forth and so on. You know so, what? I never thought about it like that, Aaron. That's a great point. I know, I you know, that that yeah. also may be a big deal. Can I can I touch up on uh, what you said, Joe? Um, when I when I look at bidding, I'm always imagining who's actually bidding on it, and I'm always thinking about you know obviously the demographic and and the age. I'm always w I'm wondering, okay, if when I look at these two um, bids. I'm always looking at like, all right, this is an older crowd and this is a younger crowd. <laughs> you know, I get, you know, you got this young money and, and older money at, down at the bottom. And then you just have old money on the top. So I always, I always try to look at a book and say, you know what? I'm going to go for both. <laughs> I'm going to go for Miles Morales because you got, you got two sides of the coin going for one one book where if I feel that it kind of falls flat when you just have a bunch of per se, let's say like 30 and up, you know, aiming for this older book, you know, I think there's more room to grow when it's, when it's kind of in the middle, you know what I mean? I, I just feel if Chadwick Boseman was alive, that book would have sold for $5,000. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're probably just, right about that. I, I yeah. just think that that is that was a huge puncture to the MCU, uh, oh, you yeah. know, as far as what they could do, uh, you know, introducing Storm. Um, I mean, it, it just, uh, you know, Submariner, just, you know, all of it, you know, and it's just, uh, it still stings. Well, with you know, I think in movies, you know, a lot, I mean, we, we, had, we had that with Batman. You know, um, there's so many different Batmans that we moved on. I think I think Disney can fix that. Bro, I, I still do not see <laughs> Superman as anybody <laughs> other than other than Christopher Reeves, man. Uh, you know? Yeah, well, that's Superman. I mean, I, I see Michael yeah. Keaton as the only Batman. You know, I mean, look at Joker. Look what happened. You know, I always thought Heath Ledger was the winner, and then I watched this yep. one. I was like, whoa. You know, well. Um, Nicholas Cage is my Superman. <laughs> but, but anyways, <laughs> just, just, uh, yeah, I just think we'll get over it. Touche, touche. There you go. All just right. Add a little bit more info to this. I was just looking up the CGC numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, which which one do you think has the higher census? Uh, Ultimate oh. Fallout Four. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Two to one. Like it's um, it's right about ten grand on Ultimate Fallout Four and about fifty one hundred for Fantastic Four. Both of these books are probably about CGC'd out. I mean, any any copies out there? Uh, maybe not. Maybe there's a lot of, maybe there's a few more Ultimate Fallout Four raws out there. But, um, but I I guess that brings me back to what what uh, Mr. Longshort was saying about scarcity. And just there's just fewer of them out there. I the thing about Black Panther too, we keep hearing about this outside money, people coming into the hobby and just buying keys and throwing them in a safety deposit boxes. And between these two books, they would go for the Black Panther right now. I think Miles is getting there. He's becoming a, a commodity. Um, but first Black Panther, that's a no brainer. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I I still need to pick a book, man. <laughs> yeah, y'all made y'all made all these arguments like super hard now. Like I, I hate this is why I hate going last and why I hate picking books. Uh, but I love it. Actually, actually, love it. first print, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm about to send one in for grading, so that may be why I'm like hesitant to see to buy a, a nine eight uh, outright 
but I feel like it's not going to hit a 9.8. So, uh, don't say that, Aaron. You, you know what, Aaron? <laughs> if, you know, we're friends. So, like, if we were at a comic shop, I uh, swear to God, I would strangle you if you bought the, <laughs> the Fantastic 452. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. Threats. I would be telling you, you better buy this before it's five grand, bro. Yeah. And then, I mean, and I've heard from multiple people on our team that, like, this is easily a 10K book, like, you know, even if it's years from now. But, like, yeah, I mean, I because, you know, supply and demand does play a big factor into it. Like, even though the numbers are higher, there still is going to be a higher demand for models no matter what, right? So I'm going to go with the Ultimate Fallout 4. I get this mental picture. Like, if there was a movie and there was, like, a big poker game and the guy's out of money and he goes, hold on, I'll be right back. And he busts out an Ultimate Fallout 4 and everybody just goes, oh, shit. You know, now the money's <laughs> on the line, you know? Yeah, yeah. I can't see that with Black Panther, man. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee that'll I be in a I movie, know. man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to try that, like, years from now. All right. <laughs> Let's see what our next set of books are. And we're back to some Nico picks. So we have... Yeah, this is a Nico pick. Uh, Marvel graphic novel number four, uh, CGC 9.8. Um, for those that are wondering, this is the uh, U.S. price variant. It's not the uh, Canadian price. Um, I made sure to check. And then we also have a CGC 9.6 uh, Amazing Spider-Man 238 with tattoos, and it's a new stand. Joe, do you want to go? Yeah. I, man, I love Spider-Man. I Dude, I, I would take the new stand 9.6 all day long. I, you know, I mean, that graphic novel's awesome, but, man, that's just a badass cover, and it's always going to be a badass cover. I remember buying that cover when I was a kid. So, um, yeah, 9.6, I mean, I just add another one. I got to have it again. So, I mean, I, that's... I mean, as you're waving a piece of meat in front of a hungry dog. I mean, Amazing Spider-Man uh, 238. And that's because they haven't really done anything with Hobgoblin. Because, you know, there's been spec that Hawaiian kid, I guess, is going to be the Hobgoblin. And that may drive this book up a little bit, too. So, I mean, 9-6 newsstand. I mean, I got a funny feeling I could make it a 9 <laughs> But, uh, yeah. Uh, final answer. I, I'm I I gotta disagree with you, Joe. I I think the issue with Hobgoblin. I love Spider Man, obviously. Um, with values, I think like we all know, you gotta you have to link it to the screen. Uh, I, I I know we've got the character, the 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 boy you're talking about in the in the universe already, but. Hobgoblin and Green Goblin just being so similar. Uh, it, there's so many. There's so many characters in the Rogues Gallery for Spider-Man. Uh, I think they visit quite a few more before they would get to Hobgoblin. Uh, I feel like they bring Green Goblin back before they get to Hobgoblin. So, uh, being a being a like I said before, an X-Men kid, I am a huge fan of that Marvel graphic novel number four. I talked to some of you guys about that. I just actually made a purchase that's pretty similar to, to what's on the screen right now, but the Canadian price variant. Uh, this is like the the Young Avengers, obviously of the of the X Men world. You've got X, the original cast. You've got uh, giant size. You know the 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 Wolverine generation, and this is the third incarnation. This is an early 80s book. This is, it is a graphic novel. Some of those don't sell or, or aren't, aren't as hot as, as others. This one seems to buck that trend a little bit. Um, people don't really look at other books for the New Mutants. Maybe, maybe we should. Maybe that's a buying opportunity. But uh, I think this is the book for that cast of characters. Uh, it's coming off of a horrible movie. It was okay. It was schlocky. It was all right. But uh 
definitely a bomb in in terms of superhero movies but again i think that's a great buying opportunity because good luck finding a 9.8 funny story about this book i actually i'm old enough to have bought this at a con uh back when it came out bought it and never opened it sat in my long boxes for decades and cracked it out a few years ago sent it in the top two corners of the plastic had frayed off and one corner had a little thing on it so it came back in 9.6 uh, so I think that's why I ponied up for the 9.8 just to redeem myself. But no, I love that book. Um, gotta love Spider-Man. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm going with the new mutants on this one. Uh, for me, I would, you know, I, like both these books are really, I mean, I would, in my heart, I would go for new mutants because I know that that book is a tough one to grade and you don't really see that many high grades. Um, but that amazing Spider-Man with tattoos, newsstand nine, eight. I mean, I think I could, I think I could sell it faster than the new mutants. Um, to be honest, I think if I just, if I, if I post that thing up, it'll just, people will be bidding on it left and right. I'll, I'll just do a, buy it now uh, so i'll go with since it has tattoos um two i would go with the 9.6 although i would for my personal collection i would go for the new means but yeah i'm gonna so i'm gonna go with amazing spider-man hobgoblin with tattoos final answer so for me, like you got the ASM 238, it's got the lakeside tattoos versus the Marvel graphic novel four, which many people don't know has um, diff like a, 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 a gloss issue. Okay, so uh, the Marvel graphic novel four um, has a gloss issue. And um, if you handle the book um, without any gloves and just even a little bit of um, oil on your fingers, there's going to be tons of fingerprint marks on that book. So condition uh, high grade for that book versus getting it ASM 238 um, with tattoos. That's what you're... Those are the things for those books. The movie did tank for New Mutants. Um, I didn't see it, but uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, um, I did watch her... Her, uh, Queen's Gambit on Netflix, and she's phenomenal. She's oh, yeah. awesome. All I hear from fans is that she was great New Mutants. She was the only good thing in that movie for the most part. I still see variants with her and the sword. Um, they still go up. Um, they're still selling. Uh, the fact that Marvel didn't um, didn't write it off. Like they actually tried to work with it and try to reshoot it and edit it and try to put it out there uh, during COVID. So I mean, who knows if it would in, was in theaters, it may have been received better. Who knows? I didn't watch it. I do track that the new books are selling um, with magic. Um, I mean, she does first show in Giant Size X Men One. I don't think that really takes away from her appeal for collectability. The old biggest question that I have is ASM 238, the next ASM 300. And a 9.6, that book and 300, it's like, I think it's like 2,500, 2,600 right now. So as a dealer, I'd have to go with the Hobgoblin, um, even though I really don't believe that appearance from uh, Peter Parker's friend is going to going to be a wow moment but as a dealer i try to flip, buy that book right now and flip it um when the trailer hits when you actually see that maybe hobgoblin should be showing up so um tough one but i'm gonna go with asm 238 does anyone know how many points they take off for not having tattoos it's a green label yeah it's a qualified label so it might as well be restored oh wow okay I, I didn't realize it was that intense for that. I mean, I knew it was important. I own a Nemean's 
I mean, a graphic Marvel graphic novel number four, and that's a tough book to get in high grade. I I got my copy signed by Chris Claremont and uh, Bob McLeod, and I think I had it pressed in between signings because uh, I got it signed at two different cons. I want to say it retained the same grade the entire time, but my initial grade was a eight zero. Uh, that back cover is all black also, and it just says New Mutants in, like, an outline. And it picks up spine ticks like nobody's business. Like, just, like, even... Because I found it out of town, and then transporting it back home, that was not easy. And I, I'm pretty sure on the travel, it picked up spine ticks. I even had, like, it squashed in between, like, a piece of cardboard taped up, like, to protect it. And that did not help, because it is magazine size. So... Um, so I would go with a Marvel graphic novel number four. And then has anyone else heard the rumor that the movie titled Mutants is supposedly supposed to be about new mutants? No, I, mean, I, heard, uh, I thought it was X-Men. I, heard, I, I, heard, I think that came from the font, actually, because the, the, the word, the, the mutant, like it was taken from new mutants, just Xing out, you know, erasing the new part, but it was the new mutants font for some reason. Like, yeah, we got yeah. fonts back. So <laughs> <there we go. laughs> hey, hey, Phil, it's what happens when you do graphics for this channel. <laughs> hey, Phil, you know every, everybody's thinking Secret Wars, but what if the big um, finale is uh, Avengers versus X Men? I mean, do you think that they would go that route? Because if that's the case, I mean, there's uh, some other books too. Because I've thought about it and I go, why would Secret Wars? Because, I mean, to me, it would take a, a lot of movies to get that going. But you think the X-Men aren't here yet. And by the time they get here, they may be the antagonist. And people will be scared of them. And they call on the Avengers and... You know, you kind of think that that would be the the next big arc, kind of like Infinity Gauntlet. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it'd be easier to do on film for sure. I think there's that one Silver Age book and uh, that has their first cro crossover. I think that's a, I think that's an X Men title, and that one was hit. That was a a, a heavily speculated book. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, a two digit book, but um. People were really believing that, oh, man, this may actually happen. Uh, but, man, I mean, I heard Secret Wars was happening. So, I mean, I can't confirm the source. Someone told me it's going to happen. So I think they'll do both. I mean, it's just a matter of which one would come first. I, I would I would guess that Secret Wars would come first because, I mean, the mutants are involved in Secret Wars, but it's not they don't need. 50 of them out there. I think for X-Men versus Avengers, you need a bigger cast of mutant characters introduced. So that might be the next big crossover. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I heard that like... I don't know. It's, it's something to think about. It's something... that's, that's how you win this game. You knock people off of their internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's what happens when you work with, in IT, you know. You, New you, learn, you, you learn all the tricks and trades. of No, yeah. I, I, I don't have that much control over... Yeah, I'm not sure because wasn't there a rumor that Doctor Strange is going to be the new mentor for Spider-Man? If that happens, what's the next story? You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Well, I want to thank everyone for playing uh, Dealer Flipside. A special shout out again for Heineken underscore Jones for suggesting their books on Instagram. If you haven't already, make sure to use the code Flipside to get a two-week free subscription to Key Collector app. Make sure to like and subscribe our channel and hit those notification bells so you can don't miss any content on our channel.